Hello everyone, welcome to week one of Accelerate, your journey to mastering Excel. In this session, we'll cover essential autofill and formatting techniques. So let's quickly start by opening our Excel workbook. I have opened a blank workbook here and I'm going to take an example of a very small data. I'll be working on the product data and sales data of five products. Okay, so let's start with the headings of this data table that we're going to make. First would be the product. Then let's take sales amount and date. So since this is a heading, I want it to stand out. Let's use bold on our ribbon to help facilitate that. Next, let's enter the data with the respect for the respective headings. I will name the products product A, B, C, D, E. Product E. Let's take the sales amount 12,000, 8,000, 3,000, 5,000, and 15,000. And date 1st March 2025. 2nd March 2025, 3rd March 2025, 4th March 2025, 5th March 2025. So now I have all the details of the product. Product A, product, product A to E, I have the sales amount, I have the date. So I want this to be uniformly aligned. So I'll just go to the alignment section on my ribbon and use center align. I also want borders for this. I click on borders, all borders. So now let's address a few very practical questions that will come up when you present data like this. What is this exactly? This is the sales data of five products. But if you see the column sales amount, my boss will straight up ask me, what is this nonsense? Why? Because it really does not have any clarity on what exactly that is. You are, you are very confused, right? What am I saying? This 12,000, 8,000, 3,000 does not have any value unless you have currency or some denomination of a rupee, dollar, something put beside it. Correct? So let's do that. And to ensure that, you know, you are giving the accurate data, you need to have all these consistency checks whenever you are doing data entry. Let's insert dollar symbol for the sales amount. I'm going to the number section on the ribbon and I'm going to click on currency. As of now, the requirement for me was dollars. But for example, if you want to have any other denomination, you can go to the same place, click on more number formats, go to currency here and from this drop down, you can select any currency denomination that you require and hit on OK. As of now, since it's dollar, I'll let it remain that way. Now, these are all rounded figures. So there's no decimal required. So I'm just going to remove the decimal or decrease the decimal points here. And also, this is a little bit tricky to read. I want to change this date to so with letters and all, with wordings and all that. You can easily do that using long date function on the ribbon. So this is how you make, you know, data easy to read and also to interpret few things from here. So let's answer a few more questions now. So which product has a sales amount greater than greater than $10,000. Right now you will say there are only two products. Imagine there are hundreds and hundreds of data. How do you easily do it? So you just have to select the range of data where you want these things. Say if I right now I'm, I want the data for 
which product did the sales amount greater than 10,000? I'll go to conditional formatting, highlight sales to sell rules greater than. And I will give the condition as 10,000 here. And I can also manually change the color in which I want the data to be highlighted. I want this to be in green and I will give OK. So this is how you can use conditional formatting to highlight the greatest value among large amount of data. I want to see which product did lesser than $5,000 sales. Again, I'll select this data. I'll go to conditional formatting. I'll go to less than and give the parameter as 5000. And I'll let it be in red because usually when you're submitting a report, wherever there are deviation is where you want it to be highlighted and red is a be best color to do that. So this is how easily you can highlight your data based on conditions using conditional formatting. Okay. So let's move on to the second part of our lesson today. That's autofill. How does autofill save you? If you want to enter large amount of data, it is really hard. That much of manual work is not humanly possible in this fast growing era. In Excel, you have that tool, autofill, where you can use it and it will be very easy and fast for you to finish the data entry. And you will also be able to do reports faster since you don't have to do too much manual work. Let's start with a simple example. Say for example, I want to enter 1 to 10 numbers. I will not enter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on. I'll just enter the first two numbers, 1, 2. And I will select these two. I will hover over here and drag this until the number I want. So now I have 1 to 10 numbers. Next, say for example, I want to have all the months of the year. I'll just enter January. And Excel already knows what are the months in the year. And I'll just drag and drop. Next, I want the weeks to design a calendar. Weekdays, weekends, the days in a week. I want that to be entered. So I'll do, just do Sunday. And then Saturday. So this is how you can use autofill to ease up your data entry work. So let me know in your WhatsApp group if you were able to do this. And if you had any hiccups while doing these simple exercises, please do post it and we will be able to help you out. Before you go, I want you to save this file on your desktop and share it on the WhatsApp group so that we can also have a look and celebrate your success in achieving the week one's exercise successfully. Okay, let's, I'll meet you guys in the next session. Cheers.